In the Arctic and subarctic, ultra-cold microbursts might freeze whatever they struck in a matter of minutes. Cold. There would be a growing atmosphere of panic as satellite communications were interrupted by the heavy cloud cover and the infrastructure began to fall extraordinary cold. Power failures would begin to take place early in the progress of the storm, further impeding people's ability to communicate and finally to survive the extraordinary cold. Choked with snow. As the storm continued, power stations relying on the delivery of coal would shut down as deliveries would stop. Ultra-cold microbursts. Nobody in the world was untouched. The extraordinary cold. It was so white, the land, and the sky so very blue, the air had purity to it. At minus 63 degrees, care had to be taken to breathe, but he was well equipped, feeling something like the astronauts must have felt on the moon, the extraordinary cold. Unfortunately, ice ages last much longer than warming periods, and human destiny would now change profoundly. Oil and gas transmission would be interrupted as exposed pipeline sections burst or pumps on oil lines burned out due to the increasing viscosity of the cold oil. New York's power grid had failed in the first few hours of the storm. The city had tried to pull together, but then the central steam system had also failed. More than two million New Yorkers had escaped down the system of turnpikes and interstate highways. Cold. Nevertheless, it was thought that as many as a million people might be entombed on the island of Manhattan alone. Maybe all of them were dead. The extraordinary cold. Ultra-cold microbursts choked with snow. Desperate migrations would ensue, but roads would be blocked, snow removal having failed along with gasoline deliveries. Food supplies would fail for tens and finally hundreds of millions of people. Choked Canada, with snow. Russia, in London and Paris and Moscow, Sweden, in New York, York and Toronto, Iceland, the, the lights of civilization would begin to be flicker dead. and dim. Nobody in the world as the storm intensity peaked. The number of structures collapsing would reach astronomical levels as wind pressure and snow weight combined to create stresses never imagined. Canada, ultra cold microburst, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, and Scotland show central snow be dead. It was so white, the land, and the sky so very blue, the air had purity to it. At minus 63 degrees, care had to be taken to breathe, but he was well equipped, feeling something like the astronauts must have felt on the modern superstar. As a leader of the three-man emergency damage assessment team, he was assigned to locate survivors in Manhattan, quadrant 4A2. His job was to find heat sources lurking in the ruined landscape, possible signs of life. The plan was to use infrared scopes of a type Bob was familiar with from his days in the military. Modern superstar. He'd taken the job because it was important. He'd been a ranger after all, and done long-range reconnaissance during the Gulf War. Famine would spread quickly through most of the world that is now dependent on North American grains. Starvation would lead to migration, and large numbers of Mexican citizens would begin appearing in the southwestern United States with a consequent rise in violence as panic-stricken U.S. citizens fought to preserve what was left of their communities and their food supplies. Ultra-cold microbursts choked with snow. Modern superstorm. It was so white, the land, and the sky so very blue, the air had purity to it. As Bob saw it, any survivor with rescue skills was morally obligated to use them and would spread quickly. As he and his two teammates moved slowly down 40th Street the on their snowshoes, they peered into the fifth and sixth story windows the they were passing. The glass was gone, all of it. Inside, the rooms were choked with snow. The modern superstorm. The British Isles would be a devastated remnant. The vast of European nations on the Spain, Spain, Portugal, and Italy would be likely to remain intact. Swept by high wind. If the storm did not cause permanent freezing, the resultant spring melt would flood every river system in the northern hemisphere. Ultra cold microbursts. There were six emergency teams like the one on Manhattan. Five more working in the rest of Canada, the city. Russia, Thousands were needed Finland, all over Sweden, the country. Norway, cities like Iceland, Philadelphia, Scotland, St. Louis, Kansas, Kansas City, Salt Lake, Lake, all of them extraordinary conceivably cold. contained survivors whose time was now running out. Modern superstorm. As the years passed and the ice mass grew steadily larger, human activity would be constantly and increasingly impeded by ever worsening weather conditions. Choked with snow. In the end, 
climate of places like Louisiana and Spain would be like the climate of southern Siberia is now. Mankind would be adrift in a sea of memories and recriminations, a bad, desperate for survival by his fleecing, crossed, treacherous plains swept by high winds. He was also here because he and his family had survived. Not untouched, of course. Nobody in the world was untouched. Marty kept a paper copy of the last email from her brother in England. Would always keep it close to her. He died at his desk, no doubt of it, assembling satellite data for the British Meteorological Office. Modern Superstorm. It is possible that the death rate among people trapped inside the main body of the storm would approach 100%. He died. Those surviving it until the sun came out, at probably death. sometime in mid-March, no the storm doubt started in early February. Assembling satellite. The face of vast, glaring Assembling desert satellite lights, data for the British. Crack, treacherous plains, swept by Finland, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, and Scotland would essentially be dead. It was so white, the land, and the sky so very blue, the air had purity to it. The time of year that the storm took place would determine whether or not its aftermath consisted of massive floods or the beginning of a new ice age. If the ice did not remain frozen, the flood that would follow a modern superstorm would be similarly devastating. Almost unimaginable destruction would occur south of the already desolated storm. Rivers like the Mississippi would briefly become sheets of water hundreds of miles wide, drowning everything in their path. Ultra-cold microbursts, the extraordinary cold.